What is up, everyone? This is your boy here, the Yankee Messiah 401 here. So, um, outside of Yankees baseball, we are going to be talking about a big show that is going to be happening this weekend. Uh, Impact Wrestling's uh, Rebellion. Of course, the pay-per-view is going to be on Sunday night uh, at the Skyway Studios in Nashville, Tennessee. So, Fight TV, if you got it. It's going to be on Fight TV and traditional pay-per-view outlets. And one of the reasons why I'm doing this video is because this show has two reasons why this is going to be a watch show. One, Mauro Ronaldo is coming back for commentary to uh, do play-by-play -play for the main event. Which is going to be my second reason why I am watching this pay-per-view. You got Rich Swan, the Impact Wrestling Heavyweight Champion, going up against the AEW Heavyweight Champion and Kenny Omega. So, it's historic, title for title. I'm excited for it. And um, before we talk about this match, um, we're going to get into this card. So, um, the first match that I'm going to be talking about is we got Violent by the Sign. Uh, Eric Young, uh, Joe Doran, uh, Dina, and Rhino. They're going to be going up against Chris Saban, James Storm, Eddie Edwards, and Willie Mack. And uh, this is probably the best collection of mid-card babyfaces that Impact could put together to face their only uh, fraction right now in Impact. And the thing about this match that I'm interested about is... Eric Young. Why? Eric Young right now is wrestling with a torn ACL. Yeah. That's freaking crazy right there. And I'm going to say this. It's a little harsh, but actually quite a bit harsh. But the setup for this match has been good. And the closing angle from, and I will say this from the record. I really don't watch Impact Wrestling. I just read about what happened on Impact Wrestling through reading wrestling reports and on podcasts. So, they had this closing angle uh, this past week on Impact. And it was real fun. So, I like all of these individuals in this match. And I know I'm going to enjoy this match. And... I think it's going to be quite good, but my main issue here is that I don't know what Impact will do next with Violent by Design. Where are they going to go? And with my prediction on who's going to win that title for title match, I just, I really don't know. So, um... I had hoped that the mystery asylum of Tommy Dreamer would be revealed as Willie Mack or Heath Slater because, you know, Heath Slater right now is with Impact Wrestling. And that's going to add a wrinkle of intrigue and character development. But we'll see what happens because the whole uh, dynamic of this match it makes me think that this is going to be the opening match of the show. Um, in terms of who I think is going to come out victorious here, uh, I really don't feel that this is going to be a blow-off feud, to be honest. It wouldn't shock me if Violent by Design wins. But with that being said, if you did watch Hardcore Justice on WrestleMania weekend, Eric Young also got the win on the Go Home show. So I'm thinking the baby faces are going to come out and uh, become victorious here. So that's where I'm going to go. Uh, the next match that we have that I'm going to be talking about. Matt Cadona going up against Brian Myers. Uh, when Matt Cadona uh, signed with Impact Wrestling early in the year. And this was after Brian Myers signed a permanent deal to stay with Impact Wrestling. I always thought that this was going to be the first proper feud uh, for these individuals. And 
from what I've been reading in the dirt sheets and all, this feud has been quite good. It's not been presented as a blood feud, and that's the right call right there, people. Almost everyone that watches Impact will know that they're friends, and Matt Striker's out there uh, turning them against each other too hard. It just doesn't make sense. Uh, Cardona called for the match. Brian Myers wasn't interested in it. And that was until he attacked um, Jake something. Uh, who has sadly been used as little more than a pawn in the story. Uh, I don't know what sort of deal uh, Matt Cardona has with Impact. This is a tough match to call. I mean, Matt Cardona, that guy could basically leave Impact Wrestling and go to another wrestling promotion, Ring of Honor. Uh, he's already been in AEW. I don't know if he would go back to AEW, especially with the fact that his um, girlfriend, wife, whatever, Chelsea Green, is going to be looking for a job pretty soon so he's really the sort of guy who would be perfect in a losing effort against Kenny Omega if they do an Impact TV main event and a win here that's going to get him there uh, Myers is the permanent guy though and does need a win in this spot mainly because it does give him credibility but I'm going to have uh, Matt Cardona win this match. I'm going to uh, roll the dice on that. Last man standing match. Sammy Callahan going up against Trey Miguel. I've been hearing a lot about this feud. Real shit. I've been hearing a lot about this feud. And this to me is one of the best built matches on this pay-per-view. I'm not going to lie about it about it. I, I, I'm really not. Callahan's better feuds, they've normally come when there's a shade of truth to his wrestling promos and that's been the case here. And when Trey Miguel, uh, somewhat surprisingly to, to me as a wrestling viewer, returned to Impact earlier this year. Now I know his buddies, uh, MSK, uh, they're doing their thing in NXT. When Trey Miguel returned, Sammy Callahan called him out. And he said that Trey ran away every time things got difficult and that he never won anything in Impact because the guy was a choke artist. And someone who always fought well to get to the big spot, <clears throat> but would never step up when that big spot came around. I could have done... Uh, without the uh, strange bedfellow stuff. But all in all, this feud has been so great. <clears throat> Portraying Sammy Callahan as Tommy Dreamer's uh, mystery assailant. Uh, it's really done to give Trey Miguel a chance in the main event. And it was a great king to set this match up. The last man standing stipulation, um, it's a little bit weird, but it's the type of environment where Sammy Callahan is the most comfortable with. So this is going to be a good match, and whatever its trays remains to be seen. And I feel there is some expectation, on my part at least, for him to have a good showing. Now, Impact Management always positioned Trey Miguel as the singles guy in the Rascals. And I feel that he's destined to be Ace Austin for the X Division title later on this year. Given that this feels like the blow-off to this feud, I have this um, feeling... That Trey Miguel could be walking out the winner here. Um, <clears throat> my prediction originally was Sammy Callahan. 
because it is last man standing for one number two that is his environment but i kind of feel like this is going to be a blow-off feud here people and when you have a blow-off feud you gotta go with the baby face here and that's where i'm going with i have to say trey miguel wins so impact knockouts tag team championships on the line fire and flavor uh kara hogan and tasha Steeles. Going up against Jordan Grace and uh, Rachel Ellerin. Yeah. Um, going into the go-home show. Jordan Grace. There was two names. That I thought was going to be her tag team partner. One. Taylor Wilde. Because you're seeing all of these vignettes. That Taylor Wilde is coming back. And that is the case. Or. Or. It was going to be Rachel Ellerin. Maybe a little bit of a surprise. Could it be somebody that uh, is currently wrestling in the independence? I know some people would have think. Um, apologies if you do hear that. That is a siren. Um, I thought it maybe could have been somebody from AEW. Or somebody in the independent circuit right now. But in the end it was Rachel Ellerin. And Rachel Ellerin saved Jordan Grace from a two-on-one beatdown. Unfortunately, you know me. I'm a fan of women's wrestling. I will say this, though. I'm not invested in this match. I'm going to give you two reasons why. Number one, Jazz, her retirement was executed perfectly. She got a good little run with Impact. She went out the right way at Hardcore Justice. And watching her um, retirement speech, that was great. Giving her a win over the Tag Champs five nights after she retired. However, was not the one. Having Jordan Grace in this match, it makes sense. And they could have done it in a variety of other ways. Which would have utilized Jazz's retirement in a better way. My second problem with this match. Is that the tag team division when it comes to the women's side of things. They have been. Uh, I have to say it, it, a little bit of a downgrade. Why? Because I really don't feel that there is a tag team division in impact on the women's side of things. You split up. The only team that makes sense. Havoc and Navarro. With the latter leaving the company. There is literally no one else at the moment that is going to challenge uh, Tasha Steele and Karen Hogan. So... I got to say that Jordan Grace and Rachel Ellen win. And that is the only real direct. <coughs> Excuse me. That is the only <coughs> direction that they go in. And I'm not sure it's the, one, the right one. Because I think what Impact's doing. Impact... They're planting the seeds for Jordan and Grace to turn heel. But I fear right now the only option out there is let's put the titles on uh, Jordan and Grace and Rachel Ellen and see where they go from there. So that's where my uh, prediction is going to go with this match. Impact X Division Championship on the line. Uh, Ace Austin going up against TJP and Josh Alexander. Chris uh, Chris Bray, uh, his injury is a damn shame that he went down. It is what it is. <coughs> because I think he would have been involved in this match. Maybe a singles match against Ace Austin. Or a four-way match. But regardless... This match has been well built. 
even if I always preferred some combination of these guys in singles competition or a triple threat match, on paper, I have to say that this is going to be the second best match of the night. This could surprise and be the best match of the night. Because the X Division, once again, has been anointed the work rate division of Impact Wrestling. I feel like the X Division is back. And you look at the whole veritables here. TJP, the guy's been awesome. Ace Austin, that guy has been awesome. Josh Alexander, going from a tag team wrestler, you know, being part of the North with Ethan Page. That was one of the best tag teams that Impact Wrestling had, in my opinion. Once Ethan Page left and went to AEW, I felt like Josh Alexander really cemented himself as the best singles wrestler in that company right now. They've all had wins over each other in some entertaining matches on TV. It gives a little nice story that <coughs> they each got that person's number. But as far as I see it, Josh Alexander, as much as I'd love to see that dude win that match... I think they're going to protect him in this match. I really do. But what makes sense here is that <coughs> Ace Austin is going to win this match. I see TJP taking the fall here. That is going to be the most likely scenario. So Ace Austin is going to win this match and um we're gonna move on uh to the impact knockouts championship match all right i'm back here so um when your throat is all raspy and um you're coughing a lot i had to get a drink of some poland spring water here i'm good to go ready to talk about this uh knockout championship match here between diana Pizarro and tanel dashwood you probably can't blame this on what Kylie Ray and this whole situation that happened six months ago. But I'm going to have to be giving some constructive criticism here to uh, Kylie Ray. The stunt that she pulled six months ago, and since then, that knockouts title picture, I'll I'll say it. The whole division right now is flat. It sucks. When you have Tanil Dashwood and her gimmick, it's just ice cold. At least in my opinion. And on the other side, within a year of joining Impact Wrestling, as this uh arrogant Brash Heel, who's been fantastic. Diana Pizarro. <clears throat> she has migrated to becoming a babyface. And I'll admit to not liking the corny, <clears throat> cowardly, hiding behind R.D. Evans. But this doesn't feel like the best use of her. And it's... Indicive, in my opinion. Because Impact Wrestling is running out of ideas. As much as I don't think it's a great move, uh, Tennille sneaking her way to the title, that is going to be a payoff to her story. And I really think it's going to add this spark to the Knockouts division moving forward. I mean, her wrestling promo work Especially on the go-home show. Talking about being the one. Who herald in the progression of women's wrestling in North America. And that is true. Yes it is. 
That is true because look at all of the stuff that she did with Paige. The first ever NXT TakeOver show. Um, and being part of, you know, the start of what was this evolution of women's wrestling here in the United States. To me, with her winning and saying that, it's very good and it sets up a title win perfectly. So, honestly, this match it is going to be the worst match of the night, or I could say the weakest match of the night. But Tanel Dashwood um, is going to win this match. I have to say it. Next up, uh, the Impact World Tag Team Championships on the line. Finn Juice, Juice Robinson, and David Finley going up against the Good Brothers, Carl Anderson, and Doc Gallows. Uh, I am defibrillated more over this match than any other on this show. <clears throat> I honestly just don't know about this feud or what is going to happen after this feud. Uh, the segments involving these guys, at least in the ring, they've done good numbers. So it would make sense for the company to keep it going. However, you know, there has been no story ever since Finn Juice won the titles at Sacrifice. Or there wasn't until the Go Home Show. Sure, these are guys from New Japan Pro Wrestling. New Japan Pro Wrestling. A company that is, yeah, uh, in a slide right now because of the pandemic era. And to me, it seems as, you know, the former champions get in their obligated rematch clause, especially with Finn Juice, not even there for the recent TV to give this a real push. It had felt quite flat, but the Good Brothers, they knocked it out of the park uh, yesterday with their promo. You know, and then wrapping up an easy win over DK before explaining that they had been distracted before and they had rested, but Finn Juice defeating them had them snap out of it, uh, losing the belts had lit a fire under them and meant the only thing that they cared about were those belts. That's enough to get me back in the game and given how decent the first match was, I have reasonably high expectations for this match. I really do. Although their time without the belts would have been brief, I got this great feeling that the Good Brothers are going to win the belts back. And it's going to lead to this really awesome veritable that I'm about to share right now. Because, man, <clears throat> there is a lot of stuff that I'm going to get to here. So let me get another drink of water. Wait for the siren. It's a fire siren. And talk about the main event of this show. The Impact World Champion. Rich Swan. The AEW World Champion. Kenny Omega. Let's start with the good stuff, shall we? This is a huge main event for professional wrestling. And the reason it is a huge main event for professional wrestling is impact and the obvious direction that they've linked up with AEW. And it gives Kenny Omega the opportunity to walk around as the king of pro wrestling right now. And it gives 
impact, a real pay-per-view rub. I don't know of many other matches like this at all. Certainly not between two American promotions. I mean, you're probably going to have to go all the way back in the 80s during the, uh, the second gold age of the pro wrestling era. But this is historically significant too. This is a big deal match, and it should be excellent, bell to bell. And I really think at the end of this, despite many people, uh, they probably won't watch this on various means, <clears throat> but I think Impact, they're going to get a good buy rate with this pay-per-view. I really think they will. I think this is going to be... On a business standpoint, a really great success for Impact Wrestling. Also, add in Mauro Ronaldo to commentary. Great call. Great call by Impact. Yes, he was more than a little overbearing when he was with NXT. But this guy, outside of professional wrestling, he's good at the boxing, and he's a good MMA announcer, without a doubt. And he built this match as a fight, a true sporting contest between the best of the best. And... He'll help sell that to viewers. Professional wrestling viewers that don't even watch Impact. Or, you know, AEW fans. Yeah, even some WWE fans. You know, they call me an AEW fanboy. But, see what I mean here? Look no further than the keys to victory pieces. Which was narrate, narrated by Mauro Ronaldo, by the way. That's what Impact Wrestling should be doing more of. And I'll even say it. Professional wrestling should do more of this. Any professional wrestling promotion out there. AEW. WWE. They should be doing that. Because that's how... You're going to sell a match. But. As much that. There's excitement for this match. There is a huge elephant in the room. AEW's utter lack of promotion for this match. Okay. What did they do? On Dynamite this past week. They just ran an ad on that. Which surprised me. And that was the only mention of this match since they announced it over a month ago. Surely, if in the near future, Omega, you know, he's going to be walking around with both belts on AEW television. You have to advertise what he's doing. Even if that was only in passing through the commentary team or the odd uh, vignette. AEW's decision not to can't be because they fear impact. They're not in the same league. Not remotely. I don't see what harm they're doing to their viewership or fan base by giving Rebellion the odd mention. But whatever it is, <clears throat> it seems incredibly remiss. And the most frustrating element of what has been a decent build. Yeah, I'll even say it. Don Callis, man. His promo was great. This is going to... But still, this is going to be an excellent historic match. This is something that... Pro wrestling fans... They're going to be talking about Monday. Busted Open will probably be talking about it on Monday. Dave Meltzer... Is probably going to be talking about that on Monday. Mike Johnson 
is probably going to be talking about it on Monday. This is why this match is such a big deal to professional wrestling right now. My only concern about the match is going to be the outcome. Because you know there's going to be shenanigans in this match. But with that being said, they have done a good job of building around the one-winged angel, Rich Swan, finding a counter for it. That's a great sell right there. But regardless, Kenny Omega is still going to win this match. There's no debate about it. Kenny Omega right now. I have to say it. People will say he is the pro wrestler of the year. If we go into December 2021. <clears throat> there's going to be people out there saying. The guy is the best professional wrestler of the year. I disagree with that. Because if Roman Reigns can hold on to that WWE Universal Championship, I'll tell you right now, the guy is going to be the pro wrestler of the year. Why? He is doing the best heel work that I've ever seen in his career. It's true. This whole... You know, I'm head of the table, the tribal chief, all of that shit. He, and he just had a damn near five-star match at WrestleMania with Daniel Bryan and Edge. He almost did. But yeah, um, if Roman does indeed lose the title in this calendar year, which is... A great possibility. And Kenny Omega still holds the AEW World Championship. Despite the fact that his next challenger. At double or nothing is going to be Adam Hangman Page. But if he can hold on to that title for so long. He's another candidate for Pro Wrestler of the Year. So that's going to do it here for my uh, predictions here of this pay-per-view. I don't know if I'm going to do um, a recap of it. But definitely that is something that I wanted to talk about here uh, as part of my YouTube video. Because of the huge significance of this pay-per-view and how this pay-per-view right now is treated as a big deal. Especially in the pro wrestling community. Might as well get into it. Alright. So please subscribe to the channel. You know me. I'm going to be back later. Talking about the Yankees. Hopefully they do have this winning streak. I cannot do another rant. On this team. As you can tell. My freaking voice. It's about to go. And I'm only 36 years old. So until then, I'm out. Peace.